Hallo, guten Abend. Guten Abend. Ja, äh, Ankit, Heimar, Shamashri, können Sie mich hören? Hallo, ja. Um, so, you can hear me clearly? Ja, ja. Ja, so, we'll begin. wir beginnen jetzt mit, uh, mit unserer Live-Stunde. Uh, we'll try and, I'll try and mix up a little bit of German and English. You tell me if it is difficult, uh, we will shift to English. So, uh, guten Abend und herzlich willkommen zu der Live-Stunde für den Kurs German 2. Ja, herzlich willkommen. Welcome. Uh, ich habe hier, ich habe hier uh, ein Blatt Papier uh, mit Fragen. Okay. Uh, some of you have submitted questions uh, that you wanted me to address. So I have those questions here with me. And the normal, normal process I follow is that I will go through these questions because people have uh, submitted them first uh, and try and answer as much as I can, uh, because some of the things are not for me to answer, but whatever I can, I'll answer. And then we will take uh, questions from people who are present in the live session as well. Uh, is that okay? So um, I will begin with, uh, I have got questions from four learners here, from uh, Archisha, Aditya, Shiranjani, and uh, Divya. So Arshisha is asks uh, whether there are any job opportunities after completing German course A2. Uh, well, that is something which um, I cannot answer in the sense that, that there are. I mean, um, basically, some people um, might require a basic level of German competence. But usually, if you want to um, deploy your knowledge of a foreign language professionally, then you need qualifications higher than A2. Okay, so you need uh, generally at least B1 or B2 minim minimum qualification. So let's say if you want to uh, work in, in the tourism sector or if you want to become or do some translation work, very simple translation work you can do with A2 as well, but then generally B1 or B2 would be the minimum level that is required in order to deploy your knowledge of German uh, professionally, okay, in the work field. And uh, you must have, you must be knowing by now that uh, concurrently with this course, with German 2, uh, we are also running German 3. So from uh, this year onwards, we're also offering German 3, which will, uh, which we hope will take you to the B1 level. And, um, but that is, that, that would be the minimum level I would think that is required for um, using your knowledge of German for a job. Then um, the second question that Arisha is asking is, in German language, some German words change their meaning. For example, Bayam means at the, yeah, or with the, and Bayam Essen means during the meal. Now, this is something that, um, uh, are there any such cases so how to understand this how to understand this uh, this is the actually i would say this is the richness of the language okay so if one word or one phrase has multiple meanings that points actually to the richness of the language which means that uh, in generally we cannot work with uh, with the with the one to one equation that by means by name means only this that cannot happen. So we have to be sensitive. We have to be alive to the context in which something is being used. And from that point of view, we have we can um, we can uh, we need to actually actively deduce the meaning of several words which have this uh, or phrases which have multiple meanings 
we need to deduce the meaning in a given context so we cannot begin by saying that this word or this phrase means only this okay so i would uh, my answer would be that the meanings of many words not just by and by and but as you yourself have said archisha the meanings of many words uh, can change depending on different contexts and so we need to develop a sensitivity to the context and then uh, try and uh, use our knowledge of german in order to deduce the meaning in that context this happens very famously everybody knows with pronouns there are three different z's in german z z z how do you differentiate between them but then the context makes it clear which z is meant so i hope <clears throat> and there is no particular way of understanding this the only way is to spend as much time as you can reading german listening to german um doing uh, assignments etc um so i hope i have answered your questions archisha then <clears throat> aditya asks uh an interesting question what is the difference between the handlung and the stoon the handlung and the and the stoon have the same meaning that is action that's quite correct aditya i don't know whether you are present are you present aditya aditya upadhyay okay <clears throat> so where does the difference come between handlung and tune yeah so um, the difference between handlung and tune um now if if you go back to the to the verbs handeln and tune <clears throat> tune is as we know to do to do to do some action is tune quite like machen also is to do or to make machen has that additional uh, meaning of to make as well okay machen or tun handeln has several other meanings which tun does not have okay so handeln for example has the meaning of uh, uh, almost to behave in a certain manner handeln also means to trade okay to give and take the trade is also called handel der handel is a german word for trade handeln is to act in a particular manner okay um uh, handeln uh, or handlung also uh, has several meanings in literature for example the plot of a story or um the plot of a play can also be called handlung now that that cannot be called tune okay so handlung has a much more um qualified meaning i would say than tune tune is a more general um word for any kind of action any kind of thing that we do deed uh i mean from tune we also get the word for deed which is dictat in german um so uh, i would suggest go to i mean we have already uh, i i already you know that in class also i use leo the online dictionary and you can go just go to leo and check for the difference with or for the several meanings of handlung and you will be surprised how many meanings you will find for the word handlung okay one of the meanings is also action but handlung when you refer to handlung it refers to a specific action right, where the kind of the sequence of acts is known and so on and so forth whereas the tune is a more general uh, doing something okay it can be anything thus tune it's an interesting question and uh, and you will find some answers to that in any good dictionary if you just look up the words tune and handlung and um, you will also notice that uh, when you go back to the verbs which is tun for the tun and which is handeln for handlung you will find different meanings uh, for the verbs okay i hope aditya that i have answered that question then one more question aditya has which is usually languages like hindi have synonyms synonyms which indicate the one and the same objects but have different literal meanings which show different qualities of the objects is it also the case in for german yeah that can there can be of course uh, <clears throat> words that are words for objects can also have metaphorical meanings of course and it is because of the metaphorical meanings that poetry is possible that literature is possible okay and in fact that is um, that is i would say the result of uh, our own imagination actually okay so um there are these uh, there are these um different meanings attached to words 
and they can be very um, um, very creatively deployed in different contexts. So, uh, so yes, you you do have uh, words, and if you, for example, read poetry or literature, then you will find that. Uh, but the german language also is very rich in terms of its metaphorical power you know uh, what all it can uh, one word can connote different things even like um, nouns that are words for different things okay so um i hope aditya your questions have been answered uh, then sri ramjini has asked a question about um, the submission of assignment and uh, sri ramjini is present i think uh, in today's session. Yes, yeah. So um, we, we have checked, I have asked the NPL team to check uh, what exactly the problem was. And uh, we we did discover that there was some problem with assignment number one, as far as you're concerned. And uh, they will get in touch with you. If they will, um, uh, within today or tomorrow, I'm sure they'll get, get back to you and uh, check with you what exactly problems you have faced. And that will be resolved, okay, in one way or the other. So um, yes, I've just confirmed with the team that yes, there, there was a problem with uh, assignment number one as far as your submissions are concerned. And so they will uh, get back to you um, and check with you what kind of problem you faced. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you so much. No problem. If you can submit it again, it would be uh, helpful to us, sir. Uh, that might be difficult because as you know, once the deadline is gone, then the assignment, all the answers become public. So it it might, it might not be possible to resubmit, but uh, but I, the, that uh, solution is not in my hands because I'm not, uh, that solution is in, the, is in the hands of the administration of NPTEL. So I will, uh, they have said that they will get in touch with you. Okay. Is that okay? Thank you. Okay. okay. Um, then, uh, <clears throat> yeah, Divya is asking whether, um, it would be possible to have at least a few classes where we can get some speaking practice. Yeah, uh, uh, if you're present, actually we had this before COVID. When we began the courses in pre-COVID -pre times, and um, I remember the sec from the second batch onwards, we did have um, um, spoken sessions uh, voluntary for people who were interested in learning to speak. And I think for one or two runs of German 1 and German 2, we used to have every week um, uh, or every evening, one uh, teaching assistant uh, from here who would uh, who would spend one hour with people who registered themselves for the spoken this thing. In in the COVID times, unfortunately, what has happened is a lot of people have gotten displaced, and there's been a lot of um, uh, disruption in the in in people coming together to do this kind. Because uh, in order to have spoken sessions speaking sessions, we need to have a team which is well coordinated and uh, that we'll put together again now. Hopefully it is post COVID and our students and other people who are involved in the course are coming back. And hopefully by the next run, we will be able to put together a team once again and offer at least a couple of sessions a week for interested people to practice speaking. We have done that before and uh, I, I really regret the fact that we could not do it uh, this past couple of uh, three, I think past two or three runs during the COVID period, we were not able to do that. And I'm, I'm really sorry about it, but uh, but I myself alone cannot do that because it is just, uh, uh, I mean, it is physically not possible for me to do something like that uh, myself alone. Okay. So, um, yeah, those are the questions that, I re that we received. Um, online and thank you for everyone who sent in their queries. Um, now we can, uh, if you have any questions, those who are present, uh, please go ahead and you could raise your hand or whatever and we can ask. I'm just checking the uh, YouTube chat. Uh, Pratik, Pratik Vadali has a, has a question. Um, German 2 uh, is enough to clear Kyoto A1 and A2 exam on IIT campus on IIT Madras means what uh, through NPTEL Pratik or on campus or uh, I didn't understand. So 
as far as mpl is concerned yes i mean if you do german 1 well if you do the assignments well and the exam well and if you practice speaking a little bit that is one thing we we have not been able to do in the mpl courses uh, in the last couple of uh, runs of the course so we have had several people who have done the course uh, with us and then have gone on to clear the goethe a1 with good marks uh, and we are very happy that it is that we are bringing people to a level where it is possible to clear a1 with german 1 and a2 with german 2 and we hope that german 3 which is started this semester onwards from january we will be able to train people to clear b1 as well okay so uh, the answer to your question is enough to clear the meaning uh, it depends also on how much effort you put in and how well you do but yes the with the given the portion that we cover it is sufficient okay um, i hope that answers your question prateek um iit madras youtube videos uh, no i think it is it is better to register for the course do the assignments and participate in the discussion and so on and so forth uh, so the youtube videos by themselves also i mean if you if you are if you can learn if you are a motivated learner and if you if you are one a, a person who can learn independently um, with the help of a book or two books then yes but otherwise i would suggest that you register for the course which means you can participate in the online discussion which means you can um, get assignments every week solve them see how you are performing and so on and so forth so that is my suggestion then there is um, then um, savita asks how can we keep ourselves in touch with the language while working um take a break and read something or listen to something um i but i would say while working in the sense uh, my uh, very very strong suggestion to everybody who's learning a foreign any foreign language not just german or any i i mean i am a maharashtrian and i uh, speak uh, hindi and english with fairly native fluency but if i have to learn malayalam or tamil or telugu then it is the same i mean uh, i have to keep in touch with the language on a daily basis okay i have to devote and i would say uh, you just take out half an hour from your day um, at some point of time uh, read aloud from the textbook or uh, from you, you have so many different websites also that offer you simple texts in german uh, <clears throat> read aloud to yourself Uh, listen to some uh, audios and so on and so forth in any manner for half an hour a day just stay in touch with the language that is uh, what i would suggest and while working of course i mean if you can wear headphones and listen to german songs or something like that then by all means but that should not interfere with your work okay um and enhance the fluency and vocabulary in particular yeah so uh, that again as i said <clears throat> depends on the uh intensiveness with which we engage with the language on a daily basis uh and it can be different for different people okay a book for vocab uh i mean um, dictionary i have already suggested online dictionary leo is a good dictionary for vocab uh at this at even a2 level definitely it's a very good dictionary even even for advanced learners actually it's a good dictionary um but uh, even our textbook netswerk um if you read the texts that are there or if you look at the workbook then at the end of each chapter in the workbook there is a there is a list of uh, they call it learn word charts word charts is the german word for vocabulary actually word charts in german means the treasure of words word treasure that we have okay so that is there at the end of every chapter in the workbook and you can learn that then keep it and one of the things that i i said this yesterday we had a live session with german one with the k1 people and i suggested them to them that especially where we come across phrases and expressions not just single words then it is it is very uh, useful to go back into the textbook and see where it has been used in the textbook and uh according to that pattern try and try and make sentences of your own uh as per that particular pattern which you find in the textbook okay so it is very useful to use uh 
phrases especially uh, in sentences of your own and then say them aloud to yourself and and ask yourself whether you understand them as you're saying them okay not that you say them and then you translate into english and say ha it is this is what i said not you have to we have to also learn to uh, observe ourselves whether uh, we we understand the language like as i'm speaking to you in english i'm sure that whatever i say most of it is understandable without without any delay you know without any lag so that kind of a thing has to happen in german as well and for that uh, practice would be the only um, thing so then uh, first of all uh, <clears throat> a person master in german and want to learn because it helped me interact with low yeah are any the personal coaching offered by you apart from uh, no sorry um, a fighter i am sorry but uh, personal coaching is not possible and uh, you can most welcome to register uh, for this course or for the next one german 3 as well and um, i hope that answers the question yeah otherwise uh, in the zoom chat there are messages so i'll just check now one second okay now the zoom chat uh, uh so haima is asking um, problems with articles mostly yeah we have to learn um see the till your vocabulary crosses a threshold i would say around 100 nouns uh, 50 verbs uh, 50 expressions so all put together let's say around 500 words once active vocabulary that means you know uh, the moment you see the word you know what all it can mean okay so that active vocabulary around 500 words once that that threshold is crossed then we don't have this problem but until and un- until unless our active vocabulary re- reaches that level we have no choice but to learn the articles by heart the, the moment we come across the word okay the mo- moment i come across the word tish or table i have to learn it as dear tish okay then uh, once the threshold is crossed then we we can uh, to with a fair degree of uh, fair degree of certainty uh, i'm saying this very carefully because in german you can never say anything with fair degree of certainty as far as articles are concerned but uh, we can guess uh, but we need to cross the threshold i would say of around a vocabulary of about 500 words active vocabulary so uh, you have to learn it by heart okay till then then uh, amir is asking uh, question paper pattern yes of course uh, uh, i <clears throat> um so very simple amir if you're listening um the question paper is uh, the kinds of questions that we can ask are very similar to the questions that you've answered or you're answering in the assignments are uh, you you're you're familiar with the pattern of the assignments by now which is there are listening comprehension questions there are uh, grammar questions there are reading comprehension questions so these three sections are there in the final exam as well there is a section on listening comprehension which is um, i think the weightages are um, 20 20 40 so 20 for listening comprehension 20 for reading comprehension that is you'll be given a text and an- and you to answer questions on that then um, there is 30 or 40 i think for grammar and uh, the only new component in the exam so please listen everybody who's here because uh, may, i'm sure many people have this question that amir is asking uh, the only new component in the final exam is the last component which is writing ability which means we will ask you to write a small letter or an email or a paragraph and or we will give you a paragraph in english and ask you to translate the paragraph without the help of a dictionary into german it will be a simple paragraph it will be a paragraph which is like based on the whatever first um, 10 or 12 chapters of uh, german 1 not only not even german 
So very simple paragraph in, in English to be translated into German or vice versa, a slightly more complicated paragraph in German to be translated into English uh, or write a small uh, composition about uh, um, how you celebrated your birthday or what you did uh, last weekend or something like that. Okay, we have, uh, we have had a questions about these things in a different form in the assignments, but in the exam, there are 20 marks in which you are, you are expected to write small, small texts. Okay, that is um, the only new uh, aspect of the exam, which is not there in the assignments and it is not there in the assignments also because that particular section will be manually corrected. It, it cannot be machine corrected it, it, because I will be sitting here with all your answer sheets in uh, online, of course, and I will be physically correcting each and every answer. Okay, so um, that is the, uh, I hope that answers your question, Amir, uh, about the pattern of the exam of the question paper. Yes, sir, it's clear. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, then uh, Himanshu is between uh, Deswegen and Ovvor. Uh, in terms of usage, categorically in terms of usage, Deswegen and Ovvor. Well, there are two different meanings. No, Deswegen is because of something. Uh, Deswegen. Wegen, der Sache. Okay, uh, which means uh, because of that particular thing that we're referring to, Deswegen. And Obwohl is uh, actually in opposition in the sense, even though, uh, so uh, even though my, um, my leg is paining, uh, I go for a job. Okay, that kind of an oppositional uh, relationship, that is what Obwohl expresses. So um, there are, there are, uh, there are exercises in the assignment on Obwohl. Uh, I think in this week, I, I, I have to check, but anyway, yeah, obwohl is although or even though, which kind of expresses an opposition between the two sentences that it connects, these are all connectors, it connects, and uh, <clears throat> Deswegen is actually uh, expressing the, the, ground, the ground for something, the reason for something. Then uh, Ankit is asking, um, okay, I, I hope I have answered the question, Ankit, the same that uh, personal coaching yes. is not possible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You will print this, that is again the same or right? the certificate exam for German language, even B2C, which is recognized in Europe, predominantly. How to write? Um, this is uh, Sai Hariharan is asking this question. Okay, uh, so if you're listening, um, I think you can just uh, go to the website of the Goethe uh, of the Goethe Institute, in, and you will get all the information about how to write the exam. You will get schedules of exams when they are scheduled in which cities in India, when, and they even have uh, mock tests online where you can see what are the kind of questions they ask and all sorts of. So there is, there's a lot of resources on the Goethe Institute website. So please go to their website. And uh, I, I do not know, uh, since I'm not uh, in that sense connected with the Goethe Institute, I, I'm not aware of their schedules, etc. cetera. But um, I know for a fact that they have a well-maintained website and you can find all this information there. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I think, for example, in, in Tamil Nadu alone, uh, Goethe, Goethe Institute exams can be written at least in Coimbatore and Chennai, at least in two cities, okay, uh, if not more. Maybe Trichy as well, I'm not very sure, but uh, you will find uh, a suitable center somewhere close by, I'm sure. So please go to their website and uh, see uh, what you find about their exams. Uh, previous year question papers. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is who Vaishali, Vaishali is asking. But uh, Vaishali, actually, um, if you you have the assignments with you, 
and the assignments are pretty much cover every kind of question that we will ask you in the exam so um, we don't publish uh, previous years question papers uh, i'm sorry about that um that is a trade secret that i'm going to keep so um, then um, to learn to build a sentence in german which is the best way uh, start best way to start from very simple sentences um, this is a question from arshisha uh, best way to learn how to build a sentence in german is to start with simple sentences to get a sense of the importance of the verb position um, and then um, uh, and then you can uh, gradually increase the level of complexity of the sentences that you are building uh, one of the things also which is very important to do is uh, is if you have the book with you then it is important to read aloud okay read read aloud to yourself and listen to yourself reading and uh, i as i said earlier the the target is that i should understand the text as i am reading it if i understand the text as i am reading it that means i will also read it correct i will also my pauses will be correct and my intonation will be correct so uh, that that should be our target as we read it we should understand it okay um then then automatically when i start writing or making sentences of my own uh, that structure will already have gotten um, written in my in my mind my brain and then it will come that way so reading aloud is a very important uh, exercise which uh, which we should do um, especially when we are uh, confronted with learning a foreign language and and you know it is uh, it is much easier for children to learn a foreign language because uh, as we grow older our um, our brain becomes more conditioned to the languages that we already know and so there is more resistance uh, to something new that has to be done uh, as i was also saying yesterday during the interaction with the german one course learners that actually learning a foreign language and you all of you who are learning this you would have experienced it at some point that it's a very intense process actually you know because uh, your entire system your body your mind is learning to um it is almost like a uh, and a new operating system is being installed in the computer in our brain okay and uh, that means it is going to make changes to our thought processes it is going to make changes to the way we speak as well because even the anatomy of speech that those speech organs have to move differently they have to produce different sounds and tones etc so all these things are very very uh, very personal very intense things in learning a new language uh, it's quite like uh, learning i suppose i would say even music as well or dance dance also i mean you have to learn to move your body in a uh, in a particular manner so these are very intense experiences and and uh, the more time we spend with it the better um, I, mean, i i really don't have a magic bullet to tell you that you know if you do this you can your sentence construction will improve but i i can definitely say that uh, that start building start making small sentences start reading them aloud start um, start to uh, noting uh, how to where to put the pauses uh, there are audio exercises you can listen to audio exercises and uh, follow them and so on and so forth but i think that this question is important uh, that uh, that uh, arshisha has asked uh, how to because the sentence actually when you when you can speak or build a sentence in a language then you have a uh, kind of got a sense for the melody of that language for how that language moves okay so learning vocabulary is of course very important and everything but if you can make a correct sentence and if you can speak a sentence correctly 
then that is uh, a very good sign of uh, as far as learning a new language is concerned okay so i hope um, i have given you some clue about what you can do uh, but again as i said it is uh, the more time we spend in touch with the language the better it is then uh, <clears throat> Will there also be B two C one C two levels? Uh, Chavi is asking that. Chavi, I am not sure. Uh, see, because uh, the thing is, we have to also understand that uh, as the level goes up, the how much we can how much we can deliver in a mass mode like the NPTEL. That 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 also has uh, the, the medium has its own um, well constraints. You know. so i am not i am not sure in the sense that that even b1 b1 we are we we have tried to recreate the atmosphere of a classroom with live participants and i am not lecturing to the camera we are actually having a class and there are some 10 12 students uh, even it, it was covid during the covid lockdown but we managed to uh, come together um uh, virtually in a zoom classroom and we actually had live classes even for b1 and recorded those um so uh, this is we have to see how it how effective it is and then we have to take a call on with the b2 is for i don't think c1 and c2 are possible through this okay i, I i'll tell you quite frankly uh, but at the b2 level we have to see but let let us finish with the b1 first the first time it is being offered this semester we'll see how it goes and then we can Uh, decide on B two, but uh, I hope Chavi have asked answered your question. Uh, can we? Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, then Aishwarya is asking, can we give give it exam uh, of any level, or we have to start? Uh, see, exam you can give <laughs> any level, uh, but uh, you need you need that level of knowledge of German. For example, if you want to write the A one exam, then you need that level of knowledge of German, which which we try to give through the german one course for example uh, and uh, you i mean the for people who are conducting these exams they charge a fee so i mean it is uh, if you insist that you want to write the exam without having learned up to that level well as an external candidate you can go and write if you are from that institution itself they will not allow you to write but as an external candidate you can go and write Uh, but but there's no point in doing that so uh i mean my suggestion would be if you want to write those exams after you've done like right now if you're doing german 2 uh, and if you do it well you can attempt a2 okay uh, i would say a1 you will definitely clear very well no problem at all but you can attempt a2 as well and if you've done german 2 well and we have had uh, uh, actually several instances of Uh, students getting back to us and telling us that they have done done well in A two level and A one level, so that would be my reply to Aishwarya Spesh. Okay. <clears throat> um. Yeah. Are there any other? Um, okay. In the YouTube chat, one second. Let me see. Um. In uh, Savita asking is. hard copy um hard copy dictionary you can you can buy um, i mean uh, okay I'll, i'll you can buy german dictionaries either i'm trying to get the cursor into the chat box okay um <clears throat> german uh, dictionary uh you can try um Langenscheid, Langen, S C H E I D T, Langenscheid, um, or um, Collins. Collins. These are very standard, good dictionaries which are available in the Indian mar Indian market. No problem at all. You can go to any bookstore, any good bookstore, and you find um, German dictionaries. Uh, Langenscheid is a very uh, renowned uh, publishing house. And so is Collins, Pons, Collins, German dictionaries are very good. And you can start from a pocket, small pocket dictionary up to two uh, thousand uh, page tome, hard bound tome also. So all all that uh, a very good if you want uh, at slightly higher level, 
uh, if you want to continue learning, then I think you should invest in either a Duden, uh, which, will, which is a monolingual or German-German dictionary. Um, German German dictionary. A Duden or um, Duden or even Brockhaus. I don't know the Brockhaus whether they still publish or not, but uh, I mean, my first German German dictionary that I got um, quite a long time back uh, was a Brockhaus. And uh, it's a beautiful dictionary with illustrations of different things and all that. So, Brockhaus, you have Duden. Duden, of course, is a standard for German. I mean, Duden is uh, the Oxford dictionary for German. Okay. Like the Oxford Dictionary for English, that's the Duden for German. So all these are very easily available either online or in Indian shops as well. And in Indian shops, you'll get there are Indian editions of many of these. Um, and especially bilingual, that is German, English, English, German, there are Indian editions which are not expensive. You can get a good one for maybe five or 700 rupees, uh, not more than that. The Duden will be a bit more expensive um, and you will probably get an imported uh, edition. Yeah, I hope that answers the question. Uh, then um, the hard copy declared results uh, that you can write to support at NPTEL and find out because that is, I mean, that is their uh, task and um, Corporate level German, uh, you can. I would suggest uh, if you if you have done A1 and A2 level, then uh, then there are courses uh, for business German. For example, I'm sure that there will be institutions offering courses for business German and so on. And so forth. you could try those courses and do it. I mean, um, corporate level in the sense uh, to be able to work in a German corporate. If you have done A2 level, it is enough because nowadays in the corporate world, you will realize that there are so many people who speak English. I mean, the, the German language requirement is more of a cultural requirement than a professional requirement. Okay, nowadays in the corporate world. Um, so, um, but you can learn business German after uh, once you've done up to A2 level, then you have sufficient grammar, I would say, to learn um, business German. Then, um, Is it possible to learn conversational German in one month? No. Um, depends on what level of conversation. If you simply want to ask, how are you? I'm fine. Where are you from? I'm from India. And what would you like to drink? I would like to drink a cola. At that level, yes, you can definitely do. But if you want to have a conversation with a German person about something, about politics, about cinema, about sport, about any other things, then no, then one month is not enough. But if you want to simply survive in the sense of uh, go to a shop and ask for something, go to a restaurant and order something, then yes, then one month of intensive work is enough. Okay, I hope Shriji, I've answered your question. Then Arpita asks how to check if we are forming right sentences and our pronunciation is correct or not. Well, uh, as I said, um, unfortunately, we do not have live speaking sessions. Otherwise, we have done this before for people who are interested. And, and I already said at the beginning of today's session that uh, once there is some semblance of normalcy that returns and people are available, people's times are coordinated and so on and so forth, then we will definitely put a team together again uh, and have at least two uh, live speaking sessions every week during the course. Unfortunately, I, we are still, uh, all of us, trying to come back to the campus, to our routines and so on and so forth. So in this particular run of the course, we have not been able to put a team together to do that. Okay. So um, <clears throat> then um, Glorisome is uh, uh, it needed to have even to. Uh, you don't need to have A1 and A2 as such, uh, but you need to have that. I mean, you don't, might not need those certificates, 
but you definitely need that much knowledge of german okay and and they might have an entrance test just check whether you are eligible to or you know enough german and they might advise you either go ahead or don't go ahead whatever it is but you have to check what the procedures of the goethe institute are but to write the b1 level um, the certification might not be required but that level of knowledge of german is definitely required okay um, then in fact b1 level of knowledge of german is required to write the b1 exam then we have um, and to tell um, okay um pratham choudhary is asking but i can't understand what he or she is asking yeah mm, i think i have answered all the questions that i have found in the zoom chat box as well as in the youtube chat box okay um right if anybody wants to uh, you can also unmute yourself and ask a question if you want to uh, zee kunen eine frage stellen wenn sie wollen Uh, we can in uns auch auf deutsch unterhalten we can have a conversation in german we can das gespräch auch in der deutschen sprache führen und nicht nur auf englisch also wenn sie fragen haben uh, oder wenn sie etwas sagen wollen if you want to say something wenn sie etwas sagen wollen if you want to say something bitte sagen sie bitte uh, schalten sie das mikrofon ein und sprechen sie so you can those who want to ask anything live right now are welcome to unmute and ask also so how can we be in touch with the language once we have completed all the courses on all the levels if you are going to complete all the levels uh, up to c2 then uh, you will have enough books by then you will have uh, collected enough books in german to stay in touch with the language you would definitely have made enough german friends and you would have watched enough german films to stay in touch with the language so uh, don't worry about that okay uh, but uh, but it is um, i i i understand what you mean in the sense that um, the best way is to is to keep reading and uh, if it is at an if it is not even at a base i mean even today for me for example it is very important uh, to sometimes i i like to take a german poem for example or a couple of german poems and read them aloud i mean uh, you can you can ask students where uh, i've taught literature i just uh, like very much to read aloud poems or even stories in german and that is very important i think so uh, i have done i mean i am I, i don't watch too much of german cinema anyway but people there are people who watch okay that's fine each one of us has a different way of staying in touch with the language but for me first of all though i'm teaching german so it's okay i mean i'm in touch with the language on a daily basis anyways uh, but apart from that also uh, for me reading is uh, more frequent than uh, watching german tv or cinema but at times uh, i do also watch german news uh, and films once in a while yes but uh, each one has to find our own way but uh, at least if you have a textbook and one or two other books uh, you just uh, spend some time with those books with the texts in them on a daily basis okay okay sir So yeah, anyone wants I mean we we still have 10 minutes to go so if you have questions you are welcome to ask sehr geehrte und lehrer milind so ich habe eine frage uh, just trying my german ja <laughs> yeah, gut gut das ist sehr gut also bitte bitte stellen sie die frage auf deutsch ja yeah. Uh, ich möchte uh, ein comedy uh, book uh, lesen uh, so kannst du can you suggest any uh, books like story books uh, lesen ich wann am uh, sehr gut uh, interessant uh, book lesen 
So, uh, yeah, this is uh, that's a good this idea. Is frag. Yeah, okay. Good idea. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I mean, I am not uh, prepared enough to simply suggest a book as such. Okay. Um, and uh, um, I will have to go back and uh, and look for a book to read. See, uh, I mean, there are there is a I have some books with me which have stories, poems, small ones, small stories, small poems, uh, which are meant to be. taught in a language class it is not necessarily only for literature classes but also where people who are learning the language at uh, at but slightly higher level at a2 more than a2 at, at the b1 or b2 level but anyway that that is that is a something that also depends on how much effort you are willing to take so um, if you if you put a question uh, on the forum uh, hari haran then i can uh, i can give you the names of uh, those stories and uh, unfortunately the book is only in hard copy uh, it is okay. if you can find it online i can i can put the name of the book over here it is it is a very rare kind of a book that was published in india actually by a team of indian german teachers uh, who selected small small literature texts to be taught in indian classes and it is called i'm putting it uh, here um, in the zoom chat box are you there in the zoom chat, chat box are you there or yes sir. yeah yeah zoom zoom chat yeah so uh, it is called uh, aus lese um ein buch aus buchern or buchern i'm typing with b u e because i don't have the umlaut here in this aus uh, buchern oh sorry this is not i this is going to everyone everyone in the meeting here yeah. auslese ein buch aus buchern is the name of the book uh, where we can check whether we are forming the sentence correctly in german or not um who is uh, hs i am not uh, sure himanshu yeah himanshu actually even google will tell you Uh, sir only concern which i, I was raising is uh, when we start any language in the uh, child phase like we will be given some basic stories so just wanted to uh, go back to the same phase and to learn in the similar fashion where we can have a lot of grip on the maybe grammar especially no that is, true. that is that is something that that uh, unfortunately the limitation of uh, of learning uh, german as a foreign language or any other any foreign language is or my limitation is that i am i am uh, i have always uh, i have not taught children german okay so there are school books uh, which are there are books which are used in german schools for as primers and which are which are very interesting i had a couple of those story books but i don't have them anymore unfortunately in the last time i shifted i think my house it was i lost it but uh, i had a couple of first uh, uh, again but they were old fashioned hard bound story books which is difficult to you know share with people right now but uh, but what we can do is we can uh, we, we need to look for sources on the web whether there are any sources on the web for uh, young learners of german and where you have simple stories that and that that i will have to that is a, a thing that i will have to add on to the material that is available for this course okay i'm sure that if you if you also do a google search you will find it but i but i think we should also do it it's, it's a good thing that you pointed it out um we can add that to our resources that are there uh, on the enpril platform for this course and whatever is available as open source that we can definitely share here as well thank you sir yeah better better sir uh amir german 3 will be easy to learn meaning uh, yeah if you do german 2 well then uh, then yes german 3 should be uh, okay i guess
but you can also try it out this is i think the youtube videos must be already available because um, we have already put up uh, out of the 12 weeks 10 week videos for 10 weeks are already out uh, and we will release 11 and 12 as we go into those weeks okay that's next week and the week after that so um, otherwise the first 10 week videos are already out which means they should be available on youtube as well so amir you can go and check out the videos you will find that uh, there is much more german spoken in those classes uh, a lot of almost i would say i think 80% of the class or 90% of the class happens in german and uh, you, you can check it out how uh, what you feel about the degree of difficulty there okay so um, there are any more questions in the youtube chat just checking uh okay so you youtube chat box savita is asking about the the literature book but i i doubt you might you'll find it anyway if there is any copy available somewhere with some online with some seller you might find you aus lese ein buch ein buch aus bücher okay yeah um so if there are uh, no further questions then we can bring this to a close um slowly how how is the uh, uh, course been for those of you who have been doing it regularly very good sir yeah okay very good right next there okay then uh, shall we end the session then or does anybody still have any questions okay dann um dann sage ich vielen dank und um, wir sehen uns vielleicht noch einmal um mit der april oder so Uh, let's see if i if we can manage to uh, to logistically if we can manage i'll try and have one more live session uh, after the 15th of april and before the exam uh, we'll try to do that otherwise um, hopefully in german 3 we'll meet yeah also vielen dank für heute und uh, auf wiedersehen und viel spaß beim deutsch lernen yeah Auf Wiedersehen. Thank you, sir. Bis bald. Danke. Bis bald. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen.